who would have thought that we would be producing our special events in these virtual formats? I'm really proud of how we pivoted and managed to continue to celebrate our students and to communicate with each other through meetings and messages. We've learned some tips and tricks that we'd like to share with you to continue to improve our productions. You've done a great job. You should be really proud. And viewing this today, sharing in this presentation, it shows your commitment to helping us improve and continue to make our special events wonderful. Organizing in preparation in advance of recordings is key to the most efficient production process. Decide on goals and outcomes for the event, the content and participants. Unlike live events, we can't pass a note to make an adjustment to the program and re-recording may not be an option. So this thoughtful process in advance is key. Understand that an hour of recording with you is just a fraction of what needs to be done to create these programs. There's multiple participants, editing, captioning. There's so many time consuming components that go into these virtual events. Please bear in mind this when you're requesting additional recordings. Just a few minutes of recorded program does take hours and hours of time to produce. Joining us next is Heather Milkey from our communications department. Hi, I'm Heather Milkey. I oversee the creative services unit here at the college. I'm here to help you with some tips for refining your message and helping with your graphics. First, you want to make sure that you refine your message by reviewing and editing your talking points. Stay on topic and try to be as brief as possible. One good way to do this is to check your remarks for any duplicate sentences or statements. Similarly, when you're part of a group presentation, you may want to assign a project manager who can review all of the speaker scripts to ensure there is not too much repetition from person to person. Ideally, you're reinforcing major themes, but not repeating many of the same words as another presenter. As for your graphics, you also want to make sure you're prepared with any needed slides or visuals. You can make your own PowerPoint slides by using our office's templates that can be found on our website at montgomerycollege.edu slash creative services under the branding tab. There are a lot of options to choose from as well as guides to help you use them. If you find that your graphics are too complex to handle on your own, please contact us to help. You can do this by submitting a communications project request on our website. Please allow at least two weeks for us to prepare your needed material. If you have an urgent request that's needed sooner, please contact me directly at my email. Lastly, I want to share an important note about copyrighted material. Please be mindful of what you share in your presentations. It may be copyrighted and copyrighted material needs permission from the owner. If you're unsure about anything regarding copyrighted material, please contact me. Hi everyone, I'm Francine Wyron, one of the producers from Montgomery College Television. We have been doing a lot of virtual events and presentations since early March when remote working began. So I'm happy to be here to give you some tips today to help make your presentations better. A lot of the information that I'm going to provide will help you regardless of whether you are recording your presentation or hosting a Zoom meeting or even just teaching a class. So let's get started with your Zoom call. We all know someone who starts their Zoom call looking like this. Too much room above the head, not enough room below the chin, and frequently that camera is looking up, which isn't always attractive. So the first thing that you can do is reframe yourself. Make sure that you fill the screen. Make sure that you can be seen from your elbows up or as close to that as you can get. Sometimes your camera isn't going to be wide enough for you to see all of that. But if you can see your shoulders and part of your arms, you're probably better off. It gives you a little bit of room to move without being totally out of the frame. And you want the top of your head to be close to the top of the screen, but not be cut off. The next thing you can do that will really help is to adjust the angle of your camera, the angle at which your camera is seeing you. Raise it up, put a book or two or three underneath so that the camera is looking at you straight on at eye level or just above eye level. This is gonna give you the 
best angle for most situations. There are situations where you may not want this angle, but for the most part, this is the best place to go. Hi everyone, I'm Kenyatta Rogers. I teach theater in the performing arts department. So the most important things in any presentation are the audience, the information, and you. So let's talk a little bit about you, about appearance. Let's start with the room. Your room is your room, but it can always be made better for Zoom. So let's take a look here. We have the ideas of symmetry going on in the room. And so I've got light on one side, I've got light on the other side. And those lights are creating a symmetry of light. I've got some color splashes over on the left, right behind me with red, and on the bookshelf, little splashes of color as well. So we have a symmetry of color. We also have a symmetry of lines, the big scenic elements, the bookshelf, uh, right? The lines that are going uh, over through my banister, they're all kind of either intersecting me, pointing at me if we look at the line of the ceiling above my head. So all of them are saying focus on the center, focus on the speaker. So that's one way that your room can help with appearance. Of course, there's appearance for yourself. What are you dressing for? What's the occasion? Are you dressing for something a little formal and you have a jacket or something more uh, uh, appropriate for the occasion? Or are you rocking the purple and the raptor? What is the occasion dress for that? Now, when it comes to the room, don't go overboard. Don't put anything in the room that uh, we would cast before we would cast you. So if I'm creating symmetry, I like this symmetry as well. I can switch over and I can be between these two elements here of the couch. But then I got this little guy up here, or on this side over here, uh, this cat. I am not going to cast him. He's too cool. That's one thing. The other thing that's not I'm not crazy about is the light directly above my head. It's competing with me and I don't want any competition. So your room is your room, but I'm gonna choose this symmetry here with me at the focus point, at the center. Tips for reminding yourself of the task at hand. Develop a relationship with that camera. Stay engaged. Everything is deliberate. Even if you have to get a drink of water, that's fine. Take us with you. I see the water, I pick it up. Normal human stuff. Make sure it's not furtive or quick. Anything furtive or quick brings our attention to that thing. If you just see me going for it very deliberately, you go, ah, I'm thirsty too. I might just want a drink of water. It's fine. Last, I put little notes in my scripts sometimes, things like smile, just remind myself that I should smile if I'm not a smiler, or gesture, something like that to let, my, let me know where I am in the script, what, my, uh, what I may have forgotten to put into the presentation, uh, but I might say smile. Today, I'd like to invite you to take a closer look at the arts at Montgomery College. And that just helps me remember where I am. So remember three things, your audience, your information, and you. Don't leave you out. Francine? Thanks, Kenyatta. I just want to tag on a few more bits of information about notes. If you do plan to print your notes, make sure that you're mindful of where you place them as the microphone may pick up your changing of pages or moving them as you speak. There's also a bunch of teleprompter applications out there that you can download for your device or your computer. Some of them will even scroll with your voice. Our next set of tips is about lighting. You have to light yourself. Your web camera is going to look at the lightest part of your frame and the darkest part of your frame, and then it's going to try and find a happy medium. Frequently, that means your face is dark. If you control the light in your room, your image will look better. So let's take a look at how. You want the light to hit you in the face. The best way to do this, as you can see here, is to sit in front of a window. Put your device between yourself and the window. Make sure that you do not have a primary source of light in your frame or behind you. If you have curtains or a shade that is translucent, diffusing the light that's coming through that window is going to help a lot. It's going to make the shadows a lot softer and going to make your face look better. If you don't have a window, you can add a lamp. First thing to consider is, are you wearing glasses? because the reflection can cause a problem. So if you are not wearing glasses, you can place the light in front of you, behind and slightly above your camera. 
if that's not possible for space, or if you are wearing glasses, you can move the light off to one side about a foot or two, and that will help with the reflection in your glasses. If you still see it and it's distracting, you can raise the level of the light, put it on a couple of books. Um, if it has a adjustable stand, go ahead and adjust that so that it's above your eye level. Just for reference, for TV lighting, we use the 45 degree rule. What that means is the light is 45 degrees out from the camera's eye line and 45 degrees up from the camera's eye line. That's something that you can strive for. It's probably not something you're going to be able to accomplish in your home office. So if you've got two lights, this can add more illumination and make it even so that your shadows are softer. So you would wanna put one light on either side of your camera. Some other things to note, color temperature is something that you want to pay attention to. What is it? It is the color of the light that is in your room. Outside light is cool or bluish. Most lamps and artificial lights in your house are going to be warm or have an amber color. Some lights have LED lamps, which will allow you to shift that color. So you can see here on the slide that I've listed the temperature of warm and cool lights, and you can use those as a reference if your light has uh, settings. You wanna be about 3200 Kelvin if you are looking for a warmer look. If you are mixing your light with a window and you want the cooler look, you can go to 5600 Kelvin. And those settings would be on your LED lamp. One other thing to note is that your web camera is going to adjust for the color of your light. So you want to try and have the same color of light with all of your light sources if you can. If your lamp produces a hard shadow and it does not have a shade or the shade is not doing enough, you can take a piece of typing paper or parchment paper or, or uh, some other sort of paper and put it in front of the lamp, which will further diffuse it. It will drop the level of light as well, so be aware of that. If you see your uh, light's reflection in your glasses, you can raise the light to get it out of your field of view. That's usually the best way to do it. You can lower your chair as well. And if you have glasses and your screen is reflecting into the glasses, you can lower the brightness of your screen a little bit, and that may help as well. I just wanted to give some demonstrations of some of the things that Francine just went over there when it comes to lighting. So these ring lights have become very popular. And if you have one, here's an example of how a ring light can light you. So there we go. I have a little more illumination on my face now, and I can control with the one that I have the level of illumination by going up and down and the hotness of the light. We can also talk about cool and warm. For me, I have a little bit of a more of a red undertone, so I'm going to go to something closer to that to get my natural lighting the way I want to present myself to my audience. So you're going to be the arbiter of that. Where do you want the heat? and the intensity of the light, where do you look best? You have to be comfortable, so you make those choices. You want the light to be in front of you, as Francine said. If it comes from the side, then it's going to create what we call rake lighting. It's too hot from one side, it provides a shadow on one side of my face and too much illumination from another. One way to, uh, to help with this is to have lighting coming from both angles, or as we said before, right in front of you. When it comes to glasses, that's a tough one. So what you can do, as Francine was saying, was lower the brightness on your computer. That'll help in one way. If you lift your eyes a little too much, you get this going on in your glasses and that's fun for no one. So you wanna keep your head steady and onto the uh, camera, making sure that if you do look to the left or right, you'll be fine, but you don't wanna raise the head and lower the head. That's gonna cause problems for glare. If you can go without your glasses, that's great. But consider this, here are my notes with a black background. Here are my notes with a lighter background. 
every little bit helps when it comes to glare and the glasses. But if you can go without them and you can make your presentation uh, a large enough font that you can go without glasses, good for you. Francine. Okay, we're gonna move on to sound. The two things that we wanna worry about with sound, how to be heard and how to hear. So we're gonna start with how to hear. For the most part, when you're doing a Zoom presentation, you can go without headphones. However, if you are recording with MCTV or another recording application, you may need to wear headphones. We usually do this if there are more than two people in the production. Why do we do that? Because it eliminates the echo and the feedback of hearing other people's voices through your microphone. By using headphones, that sound goes straight into your ears, and it allows you to hear clearly what the other presenters are saying. When you are trying to purchase or decide on what pair of headphones that you want to use or can use, first is obviously the connection. Most devices have one one eighth inch jack where you can plug this in. It's a standard, standard headphone jack, as you see in the picture here. There are some other options. Uh, a lot of them come with your cell phone, uh, USB, USB-C, and Lightning. We will provide a list of a variety of headphones that you can take a look at, but really, as long as you can hear, a cheap pair of headphones are sometimes better than none at all. Some of them have an integrated microphone, so we'll want to consider that as an option to having an external microphone. It helps you because it only has one uh, connection to your device. So if you only have one eighth inch jack, you plug this in, it takes care of both your ability to hear and your microphone. For the most part, your uh, laptop or your webcam is going to have an integrated microphone and that's gonna be adequate for a meeting. If you want better voice quality, you'll want to use an external microphone. Clearly, these are not required, but there are a lot of them out there, and using one of them will help to eliminate the hollow sound by getting the microphone closer to your mouth. Things to consider when purchasing a microphone. How it connects, again, it can use the eighth inch, the quarter inch, uh, a USB, USB-C, any variety of connections that might connect to your device. For virtual recordings, I do recommend that you look at USB connected microphones because they allow you to use your headphones from the eighth inch port on your device. And the microphone will plug in USB and you can control it better. This is less about sound and maybe another way to think about it is how you want to be heard. We're communicating the information to our audience. You want to always keep that triangulation in mind. Audience, information, and you. So eliminate all distractions that you can. You are living in a household with other people, perhaps. See if you can let them know, hey, I'm recording for the next hour or so to eliminate those distractions outside. Eliminate distractions in your workspace. If you must stay connected to your phone for your job, then it's there and you can look to it if you need to. Again, everything is deliberate and then bring, bring it back and reestablish the triangulation between the information you have to deliver, your audience, and you. If you can have a moderator to take care of all those technical things in a webinar, do. Make sure that your focus, again, is your audience. Gesture. Suit the word to the action and the action to the word. So you don't have to use your hands a whole lot, but if you want to make a point to make sure that everyone gets that point, do. Listening. It's hard to listen when there's no one there in front of you, but you can anticipate what your audience needs or wants to hear. And you can also anticipate their reactions. Remember, let nothing get between you and your audience, including your presentation. Thanks, Kenyatta. I wanna close with some information about your internet connection. My first recommendation is always use a wired connection. If you can't, be close enough to your Wi-Fi router that you're going to stay connected to it. If you don't know your internet speed or if you are having trouble with your connection, there is a utility online called speedtest.net. You go to this website, you click on the, the test, it sends out a signal in both directions and tells you what your speed is. 
my recommendations for smooth upload or your outgoing stream and download or your incoming stream are 10 megabits per stream. So if you are connected to Zoom, it's 10 megabits up and 10 megabits download. If you have multiple streams connecting, which is usually uh, a utility other than Zoom, you may need more. 10 megabits is a lot. It's not what you're using. You're probably going to use about half of that, but 10 megabits is going to give you that padding you need if somebody else, say your child, wants to watch a video on YouTube while you are recording. If you have a lower connection speed and are having trouble, you may need to ask others to eliminate or limit their usage during your presentation. Close all the programs or any tabs in your browser that you will not need for the duration of your presentation. Turn off or mute all notifications. That's really important because we don't wanna hear you getting emails. And I'll finish with this alternative. If you are truly having connection issues and cannot do your presentation live, if you do not need it to be to a live audience, an option could be to record it locally on your device and then share it using one of the many social media apps or just posting it online for people to download. Wasn't that great? I always learn something new from my amazing colleagues, Heather, Francine, and Kenyatta. Thank you so much again. We really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. And many thanks to Stacy Miller and Kima Earl who organized us in producing this information session. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next recording session.